Do you know who is the reinforcer of rubber compounding? Welcome back to My Rubber Heart, the channel where we dive deep into the world of rubber. In our journey so far, we have explored the fascinating production process of both natural and synthetic rubber. Today, we are expanding our knowledge to one of the most common raw materials used in rubber compounding, silica. Yes, that's right the reinforcer that plays a pivotal role in enhancing rubber's properties. Let's embark on this exciting journey to discover how fumed and precipitated silica are produced, their unique properties, common uses, and how they are revolutionized the rubber industry. Silica, or silicon dioxide, is a versatile material that significantly improves rubber compounds. Its two main forms used in the industry are fumed silica and precipitated silica. Both have distinct production processes, properties and applications. Let's start by understanding how each type is made. Let's take a closer look at how fumed silica or pyrogenic silica, as it's scientifically known, comes into existence. The journey from raw material to the fine powdery substance we utilize in numerous applications is both fascinating and complex. The key to its production lies in the flame pyrolysis process, a method that combines chemistry and high temperature engineering to create this versatile material. The process starts with silicon tetrachloride, a volatile precursor which plays a crucial role. In the heart of the reactor, this compound is introduced to a flame that burns at incredibly high temperatures, exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. This flame is not just any flame, it's precisely controlled, fueled by a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, ensuring the perfect conditions for the reaction to occur. As the silicon tetrachloride encounters the flame, it undergoes a rapid decomposition. This reaction is not merely a burning, but a sophisticated transformation where the silicon tetrachloride molecules break down and then recombine with the oxygen present to form silicon dioxide, also known as silica. The extreme heat of the flame ensures that this process happens swiftly, leading to the formation of very fine silica particles. These newly formed silica particles are amorphous, meaning they lack a defined crystal structure. This is particularly important because it gives fumed silica its unique properties, such as an exceptionally high surface area. To put this into perspective, just a gram of fumed silica can have a surface area of several hundred square meters, akin to the size of a basketball court. As the particles form, they do not settle as one might expect. Instead, due to the intense heat and the conditions within the reactor, they remain suspended, creating a smoke of silica. It's this smoke-like appearance that gives fumed silica its name. The particles are then collected and through careful cooling and processing, they are turned into the fine, fluffy powder known for its ability to act as a thickening and reinforcing agent. The beauty of this process lies in its precision and the purity of the fumed silica produced. Like other methods, Flame pyrolysis allows for the production of silica with minimal contaminants, making it ideal for applications where quality and performance are paramount. Shifting our focus from the fiery production of fumed silica, we now delve into the world of precipitated silica, a material born from a meticulous wet chemical process. This segment will guide you through the fascinating steps involved in transforming basic chemical ingredients into the structured and versatile form of silica that plays a crucial role in industries worldwide. The journey of creating precipitated silica begins with sodium silicate solution, commonly referred to as liquid glass. This solution, clear and viscous, serves as the starting point. The magic starts when the solution is carefully mixed with an acid, typically sulfuric acid, in a controlled environment. This acidification process is not merely about mixing. It's carefully orchestrated reaction that requires precise temperature and pH control to ensure the desired outcome. 
As the acid interacts with the sodium silicate solution, a remarkable transformation occurs. The acid breaks down the sodium silicate, precipitating out the silica in the form of a gel. This gel-like substance is the initial form of precipitated silica, and it's at this stage that the first glimpse of its potential starts to emerge. The gel is porous, with a network of interconnected pores that define its future applications. However, the journey from silica gel to precipitated silica is not yet complete. The next crucial steps involved washing and drying. Washing the gel is imperative to remove any remaining byproducts and impurities from the acidification process. This purification step ensures that the final product meets the high standards required for industrial use. Following the washing, the gel undergoes a drying process. But this isn't just any drying. It's a carefully controlled drying process that removes moisture while preserving the gel's intricate structure. The drying conditions, including temperature and duration, are optimized to ensure that the silica retains its unique properties, such as controlled pore size and specific surface area. Once dried, the silica gel is no longer a gel, but a granular powder. This powder is then milled to achieve the desired particle size, resulting in precipitated silica that boasts a more structured form compared to its fume counterpart. It's this structure with controlled pore sizes and surface areas that make precipitated silica exceptionally valuable in various applications. The production of precipitated silica is a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to harness chemical reactions for practical applications. Through the wet chemical process, we can produce a silica with specific characteristics, including high purity, tailored surface area and pore volume, making it ideal for reinforcing rubber, improving the performance of paints and coatings, and even enhancing the flow properties of food products. Though both are forms of silica, fumed and precipitated silica have their differences. Fumed silica boasts a higher surface area, and a three-dimensional chain-like structure, making it highly effective for thickening and reinforcement. Precipitated silica, with its controlled porosity and particle size, offers excellent reinforcing properties and improved compatibility with rubber compounds. As we delve deeper into the realm of silica, it becomes evident that both fumed and precipitated silica serve in a multitude of applications, touching almost every aspect of our daily lives. Let's explore the widespread uses of these materials, highlighting specific examples of everyday products where silica plays a crucial role. Starting with fumed silica, its unique properties of high surface area and ability to form a three-dimensional network make it an indispensable additive in a wide range of products. In the world of paints and coatings, fumed silica is the secret behind smooth application and durable finish on your home's walls. It prevents sagging and settling, ensuring an even coat that lasts. In adhesives, fumed silica contributes to the strength and flexibility, making sure the bond between surfaces is robust and enduring. Whether it's assembling furniture or fixing a broken vase, adhesives containing fumed silica ensure a reliable fix. Moving on to cosmetics, fumed silica transforms the texture and consistency of products such as lotions, sunscreens and makeup. It helps in controlling the spreadability and absorption, giving you that perfect non-greasy feel and ensuring your makeup stays put throughout the day. In the realm of footwear, precipitated silica adds strength to the soles, providing wear resistance and comfort. Whether you are running a marathon or walking to the store, shoes with silica-enhanced soles support your every step. And it's not just about the industrial and cosmetic applications. Precipitated silica finds its way into your kitchen too, acting as a free-flow agent in food additives and powders. It prevents caking and ensures that your spices, your powdered milk, and even table salt flow freely, maintaining the quality and ease of use. 
Both types of silica, through their distinct properties, contribute to the efficiency, safety and enjoyment of countless products we use daily. From the paint on your walls, the adhesive that holds our world together, to the cosmetics that enhance our natural beauty, and the tires that connect us to the road, silica is there, improving our lives in ways we often overlook. Now, let's delve into the heart of our topic, silica in rubber compounding. Silica is used to enhance the mechanical properties of rubber, such as strength, resilience, and resistance to wear and tear. In the sophisticated world of rubber compounding, both fumed and precipitated silica hold pivotal roles, each selected for its unique contributions to the rubber matrix. Let's delve into the nuances of how these silicas are integrated into rubber formulations and the transformative effects they have on the final products. Fumed silica, with its exceptional reinforcing capabilities, is a key ingredient in high-performance rubber application. Its three-dimensional structure and high surface area interact with rubber polymers to significantly enhance tensile strength, elasticity, and tear resistance. This makes it indispensable in the creation of high-end silicone rubber products such as seals, gaskets, and hoses found in automotive and aerospace applications. The addition of fumed silica to silicone rubber not only boosts its mechanical properties, but also improves its thermal stability and resistance to wear, ensuring reliability in demanding environments. On the other hand, precipitated silica stands out for its excellent dispersibility and compatibility with rubber compounds. This form of silica is a cornerstone in tire manufacturing industry, where it revolutionizes the performance of tires. When integrated into tire formulations, precipitated silica works to enhance key properties such as wet grip and rolling resistance. The improved wet grip ensures safer driving conditions in adverse weather, reducing stopping distances and enhancing vehicle control. Meanwhile, reducing rolling resistance translates to lower energy consumption, offering a greener footprint by increasing fuel efficiency and extending the tire's lifespan. But the benefits of precipitated silica extend beyond the tire industry. It's also employed in the manufacturing of mechanical rubber goods requiring enhanced durability and energy efficiency, such as conveyor belts, shoe soles, and sporting goods. In these applications, precipitated silica contributes to better wear resistance, energy return, and overall performance of the rubber products. The science behind incorporating these silicas into rubber compounds involves a delicate balance of chemistry and engineering. By optimizing the silica-rubber interaction through silane coupling agents, manufacturers can further enhance the compatibility and reinforcing effect of silica leading to rubber composites with superior characteristics. It's clear that both fumed and precipitated silica are integral to pushing the boundaries of rubber technology. Whether it's achieving unparalleled performance in high-stress applications with fumed silica or unlocking new levels of safety and efficiency in tires with precipitated silica, these materials are key to innovation in the rubber industry. The strategic use of fumed and precipitated silica in rubber compounding exemplifies how material science continues to evolve, offering us rubber products that are not only more durable and efficient, but also safer and more environmentally friendly. As we explore the vast capabilities of rubber compounding, it's materials like these that remind us of the endless possibilities for improvement and innovation. Stay with us on My Rubber Heart as we continue to uncover the materials shaping the future of rubber technology. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay elastic and I will see you in the next episode.